Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are here for episode number 61 of our AEW TEW series. One sec. Audio's on? Audio's on. Okay, let's just start again. Hello, it's me, French Ted, and we are here for episode number 61, I believe, of our AEW TW series. And it is our first shows since AEW Revolution. So, as you recall, well, I hope you recall, um, our main event tonight is a big one. It's CM Punk facing Jay White. And if CM Punk defeats Jay White, then Jay and Juice have said they will join, they will rejoin Bullet Club Gold. So yeah, there are some very, very high stakes in the main event tonight, um, as well as a bunch of other things that are happening. But first, as always, we are in the pre-show. And in our first pre-show match, we've got Blake Christian and Teton teaming up to take on two-thirds of the Trios champions, Kenta and Chris Bay. And in a decent pre-show match, Kenta and Chris Bay get the win, proving they're not just good in Trios action, they're also good in tag team action. Uh, when Kenta pins Teton with the Kenta combo into a Busakai knee kick. Uh, Blake Christian was the weak link, which is fair enough. Kenta still in extremely poor form, but still putting in okay-ish numbers. Uh, 70 rated, it's annoying that it's um, lost heat in this storyline, um, but ah well. Uh, yeah, decent little match here. Uh, Teton's doing really well since coming in. Chris Bay doing really well as well, 71, go on my boy. Uh, but yeah, not much else to say about this. The second and final pre-show match is Dionna Prazzo taking on Samantha DeMartin. And in a pre-show match that had decent wrestling and little heat, Dionna Prazzo gets the win. Go on, my girl. Um, in 14 minutes by submission with the Fujiwara armbar. Uh, Dionna with a 68, Samantha with a 56. They've got great chemistry together, which is good to see. And yeah, 69 overall. Pretty good. Can't complain about that. Uh, these are kind of mid-card-ish talents in our women's division now. Getting a 69, which is good, because way back when, our main eventers were getting 69s. So, um, yeah, the Project Women is getting better and better as we continue. Diona is definitely someone who I think is maybe more upper mid-card than mid-card, but, you know, her pop is growing, her skills are there, and, you know, she's got a great look. Same with uh, Samantha DeMartin. She's awesome too. Uh, but this, I believe, takes us into... The first match of the main card, which is some tag team action. Aussie Open taking on Rapongi Vice. And in about the had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, Aussie Open get the win. They defeat Rapongi Vice in 18 minutes. And Carl Fletcher gets the win over Rocky Romero with a tombstone pile driver. Um, Aussie Open have just gone from strength to strength. You know, both 80 plus performances now. Awesome. Rocky and Trent, you know, sitting in the mid 60s, which is like, you know, typical mid card numbers. Um, but yeah, awesome here. An 80 overall, which I'm very, very happy with. Getting the show off to a strong start, which is what we always want to see as well. And yeah, solid match. Aussie Open a decent. If it wasn't for the Golden Lovers being the Golden Lovers, or should we say Kenny Omega being Kenny Omega, um, Aussie Open would definitely be, or uh, well, would have already been tag team champions, I'd say. Uh, after this though we stay in the ring and we've got some singles action between Brian Danielson and former New Wave member Ricky Starks and in an 83 rated match that had great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd Brian Danielson gets the win of course he does in 15 minutes with the label lock Danielson with a 95 oh and Ricky Starks with a 66 they've got pretty good chemistry everyone's getting on this is great uh, Danielson and Brie have good pairing that makes sense they're married and it got the crowd buzzing uh, this was of course marked as steal the show and so far steal the show they have but we're really hoping that that is not the highest rated match of the night uh, yeah Brian Danielson with a really solid win over you know Ricky Starks a former new wave member so a former partner and teammate of Daniel Garcia and post match Brian Danielson grabs the mic and he says Nigel Nigel, I know you're back there. Come on out now, please. So Nigel, you know, slowly makes his way to the ring and Danielson essentially claims and demands that he gets a title rematch against Daniel Garcia. And Nigel McGuinness says, Brian, I hear you loud and clear. 
I've heard Brie loud and clear as well. You will get a title match against Daniel Garcia, but not yet. It will happen, but not this week and not next week. We will be announcing future plans for a Battle of the Belts coming up soon. And you will feature on that card, but not yet. You just have to be patient. So Brian, you know, kind of happy that he will be getting his title shot. Um, but, you know, he's going to have to wait for it, which is a little bit frustrating. Um, but that is kind of a, you know, subtle confirmation that we will be getting a Battle of the Belt show soon. And I don't think I'm going to book our Battle of the Belt shows as stacked as we usually do, where it's essentially a pay-per-view. Um, I think we're going to limit it to three, four matches um, on the night. You know, we're not going to put every title online just for the sake of it. Um, we're just going to put those that have maybe a title match worth having on the card. So, for example, um, Moxley doesn't really have a number one contender. I mean, he does. He's got Will Ospreay. But nothing's been kind of building that up yet. So it'd be weird to just throw that on without some kind of build up. Um, whereas House of Black, you know, they're saying they want Trio's gold. They've kind of been proving it by winning matches and such. So that could be something that can be booked for Battle of the Belts. So yeah, I'm just not going to do matches for the sake of matches. They, they have to have some kind of meaning to them. We're not just going to throw, you know, an international championship match just for the sake of it. But yeah, Brian will be getting a World Light Heavyweight Championship match in the near future. We're just going to have to wait for confirmation on when Battle of the Belts is. After this, though, we head backstage where Lance Archer and Jake Roberts approach Drew Galloway and say, Drew, we hear you loud and clear about being treated unfairly heck lance archer was virtually ignored for almost a year last year before he started making waves and couldn't be ignored the same is said for you you are a wave maker and if you can team up with lance archer later on tonight this is jake roberts talking by the way and if you can team up with lance archer tonight i've got a tag team match booked in it's confirmed by tony and nigel we would love to see what the two of you can do in the ring and make our own waves so that we cannot be ignored. What do you say, Drew? And Drew says, look, you know, there's no harm in trying. Archer, I'll see you in the ring tonight. So that is a match confirmed later on tonight. Drew Galloway and Lance Archer will be teaming up thanks to the wise, wise words of Jake Roberts, the man that sounds like he's smoked a million cigarettes in his life um, and is seconds away from dying because <laughs> uh, I don't know if you've heard him lately, but yeah, he uh, he looks like he could keel over any second. Um, so yeah, that's happening tonight. Drew Galloway, Lance Archer teaming up. And it seems like Jake Roberts is trying to build a little click of some kind, or as you can see down here with the storyline, a family, the Roberts family. Uh, but we're returning to the ring now where Jade Cargill is continuing her main roster, main show matches. And today she is taking on Jordan Grace. And in a decent match, Jade Cargill defeats Jordan Grace in 8 minutes 52 with the Jaded. And that is a 61 performance from Jade. She is getting better. Patience is a virtue when it comes to Jade Cargill. Jordan Grace with a 60 as well. You know, nothing to sniff at. Um, and yeah, 66 rated match overall. I, I'm not complaining about that. It's Jade Cargill. It's plus 60. And no one else is carrying it. Jade is carrying it equally. As you can see, Layla Gray is back into the fold. And she is back with Jade Cargill. Cargill? Cargill. The baddies are back together. Um, yeah. Awesome. 66. Love that. Let's move on because there's not much else to say. Jade is just starting to build her momentum up yet again. Uh, we do head backstage. We can see CM Punk preparing for his match. And Chris Bay and Kenta are with him. Bay saying... We've got your back, Punk. Don't worry. We're going to make sure that Jay and Juice are back in Bullet Club Gold. And Punk says, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want either of you there tonight. This is my offer. This is my proposal. They have struck this agreement with me. And I want to win it fairly. And I want to make sure that the boys return to Bullet Club Gold. And I don't want any shenanigans. I don't want any cheating. It's just going to be me and Jay out there. 
and I'm going to earn them coming back. And obviously, Bay and Bay and uh, Kenta are like, okay, fair enough. Whatever you say, boss. So it looks like CM Punk is very serious about tonight's match. Him and Jay White. Punk has said no interference from BC Gold's side. Obviously, we don't know if Juice is going to make an appearance either, but I imagine uh, Jay is going to fight this fairly because he's beaten him before. Um, let's see if he can do it again. After this segment, though, we do stage back. We stay backstage, and Swerve is seen approaching MJF and just being like, "My guy, we did it. Prince Devitt has had his lesson taught." And Swerve just has his hand out as if like he's expecting something, and MJF's like, "What? What do you want?" And so I was like, you know, I, I work for you. So, you know, I didn't get any payment or anything. You know, I was ringside um, in the in the match last night. Not last night, in the match on Sunday. And MJF's like, I mean, I'm the one that beat Devitt fair and square. You didn't get involved. You were there. Yeah, you were watching just like everyone else. But you didn't do anything. I'm the one that beat him. I'm the best wrestler in AEW and um, now that I have beaten him I don't really need you anymore so uh, consider this your final paycheck and MJF just kind of pulls out his little checkbook writes a, some gibberish and then rips it off and just pushes it into Swerve's chest and says see you around buddy and just walks off so it seems like the MJF and Swerve collaboration was very short lived and Swerve maybe maybe um you know, was too busy looking at the green instead of what was actually happening. So uh, MJF paying Swerve off for the final time, and it seems like he's going it alone. So Swerve is a uh, bye bye, no longer a part of this in a hundred rated segment because you know MJF's acting is off the charts. His performance was good, which is a good word. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, we're heading into the ring now where we actually see the Roberts family, potentially, that could be their name, uh, Galloway and Archer taking on the Von Eriks. And in a decent match, Drew Galloway and Lance Archer get the win. They defeat the Von Eriks in nine minutes when Drew Galloway pins Marshall Von Erik, who is the better of the two, with the Claymore kick. Drew Galloway killing it with an 83 Lance Archer with a 66. That man is inconsistent as hell, going from mid 70s to low 60s. Um, and then the Von Erichs, you know, floating around jobber territory. Uh, 75 rating overall, decent. Jake Roberts doing great work at ringside. Drew coming out looking as good. Uh, yeah, could this be a new team, a new family growing? Uh, Drew looks very happy post match, you know, celebrating with Lance Archer and Jake Roberts. So, yeah. Drew seems happier than we've seen him lately, uh, so it could mean the start of a beautiful relationship. <laughs> we go backstage now where we have the uh, on-screen debut since his re-hiring or promoting of RJ City. And Will Ospreay is being interviewed and reflecting on his Owen Hart win. That doesn't seem like people are happy about him turning face, but I don't care, he's turning face. Uh, blah 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 don't care it's fine his face now uh, Will Ospreay just talking about winning the Owen Hart Cup um, how much of an influence Owen Hart is in general how proud he is to be the winner of this and that he is loving life in AEW and he is solely focused now on becoming the AEW World Heavyweight Champion and dethroning John Moxley so not the most faces, face faciest of promos but i just wanted will osprey to be a face um i don't think he works the best as a heel in the way that i'm planning on using him so face osprey is here to stay for now and uh yeah we will be getting osprey moxley at some point in the future uh 69 here you know rj's got really good microphone stats um i think it's just his popularity needs to come up a bit for the stats to reflect here osprey as well has okay entertainment stats but 69 nice great number but you know we would like a little bit higher uh, but this is the final segment heading into our main event cm punk the current leader of bullet club gold taking on jay white the former leader of bullet club gold and as we can you know 
reflect on right now, just like Will Ospreay reflected on his own heart whim. Um, all that while back at the first All In show, or no, All Out show that we had, uh, Jay White defeated CM Punk, meaning that CM Punk had to join Bullet Club Gold. And weirdly enough, Punk settled in too well um, for my liking, um, to the point where we all thought that Punk was just another member. Uh, but it turns out Punk had a plan all along. He was turning the Bullet Club Gold members against um, Jay White and bringing in his own members in Kenta, um, of which eventually when what was meant to be one of the crowning moments of Jay White's career turned into a disaster when Punk and the rest of Bullet Club Gold, minus Juice and Keith Lee, who is now on his own, um, attacked Jay White and kicked him, Juice and Keith Lee eventually left Bullet Club Gold. And over this time, they've been feuding and feuding and Punk has just kind of turned a new leaf again which again could be mind games might not be he has offered uh jay and juice a place back in bullet club gold let's restore bullet club gold to what it was so jay says you know what we will join bullet club gold but only if you can beat me in a match cm punk so yeah the stakes are high uh will jay and juice be bullet club gold members by the end of tonight there's only one way to find out and that is by clicking this next segment button let's do it oh an 88 not bad was hoping for a little bit better which you know sounds crazy but still um in a bout that had superb wrestling my favorite word c m punk defeats jay white in 28 minutes he makes jay white tap with the anna Conda Vice. Jay White held on as long as he could. Juice was ringside screaming at Jay not to tap, but eventually he does and has to succumb to the loss against CM Punk, meaning that according to the rules of the agreement, Jay White and Juice Robinson are officially Bullet Club Gold members again. CM Punk with a 97, Jay White with a 90. And yeah, they've got great chemistry as well, which is awesome to see. Yeah, simple CM Punk win. Love that. Were there any negatives? Probably declining physical ability. Penalized for stamina. Um, yeah, he managed to do a 28-minute match. Perfectly fine. Uh, low heat between Punk and White. That's silly. Uh, yeah, so post-match, we can see here that Jay White eventually is up on his feet. Punk helps him up. Jay White is super apprehensive because Punk has his hand out. The last time these two were in the ring, um, it didn't end well for Jay White. And Jay White eventually shakes Punk's hand. Punk brings him in for a hug. There's no shenanigans. There's no turning. There's no attack. And Juice Robinson is, in, is outside of the ring and he can't believe it. He is losing his mind. When Jay White signals to Juice to come into the ring, Punk as well, come into the ring, bring it in, shake my hand and juice shakes his head he refuses he says no this was not the plan this is not what i want and juice walks out on jay white he can't believe that one jay white lost and two jay white just willingly joined bullet club gold again so it seems like there is now a separation between jay white and juice juice being the man who refuses he stuck up Stuck up, stood up, stood up for uh, Jay White all those weeks ago when Punk attacked him. He lost to CM Punk in valiant fashion um, and now he's refusing. He's saying, no, I want no part of this as long as CM Punk is involved and he is gone. He has left Jay White and CM Punk in the ring. And that is how we end this show. Let's see how we did. An 89. Oh, Dynamite is back, baby. Uh, Dynamite's been a bit, little bit lackluster lately, but yeah, that main event uh, scene was awesome. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Uh, yeah, 89. Can't complain. Collision has got a lot to live up to. Um, and looking at the Collision card, anything can happen. Um, but yeah, that is Dynamite all wrapped up. We're going to have to wait and see what happens next week. When is Battle of the Belts going to be announced? When's it going to be? How long can Jade Cargill keep up this run? Should she be booked on uh, main TV? Galloway and Archer, is this a new match made in heaven or match made in hell? Um, Will Ospreay getting his world title shot at some point. 
Danielson as well getting his title shot at some point. And yeah, Jay White is officially back in Bullet Club Gold. Uh, what happens between Jay White and Juice? We're going to have to wait and see. But yeah, electric episode. <laughs> Let's uh, head over now to AEW Collision. And we are here for Collision. And in between um, Dynamite and Collision, I did a little something something. Uh, it wasn't worth recording to be honest, but I created my own broadcaster, which I will be planning on using for select special events, things like that. Um, so it's just called uh, All Elite Access. Uh, it's basically just the WWE Network version, but for us. And I'm slowly going to pump money into it now and then to put, uh, just to make it massive so that we get that huge outreach everywhere in the world. So I think for now, uh, that will be used for kind of like lesser events, you know, things like Battle of the Belts and stuff, um, just to see what kind of money it brings in. And then slowly we will transition that um, to hopefully having everything or, or at least all of our events on our own broadcaster because I just want to see what the money sitch is because we're huge. Obviously, we're going to get the buy rates from everyone, so we're making money for all of these different broadcasting deals. Um, but if we can just get all that money into us, then yeah. Uh, also, um, I put a cheeky bid in for a certain massive star as well, but uh, I'm not saying a single word on who that might be. Uh, because if we can bring them in, because there's already been three back and forths, um, yeah, it's a game changer. Um, but we are here in Collision. Let's focus on that. Uh, got a fun show ahead. Uh, don't think it's going to be as huge as the main event last week. But still, pretty fun. So let's just see what happens, I guess. Uh, we're beginning in the pre-show, where Tankman and Powerhouse Hobbs clash in a big old brawl uh, that sees Calvin Tankman go over. Calvin Tankman is extending his win streak by quite a bit now. Um, and he gets the win over Hobbs with a Tankman driver. 72 overall, pretty good. Hobbs with a 61, which isn't bad for him. And Tankman with a 75, which is, you know, pretty much what he gets all the time. Following this, though, we got one more pre-show match. And it is the Magical Sugar Rabbits taking on two members of the Ito Respect Army, Emi Sakura and Suzume. And in a pre-show bout that had subpar wrestling and non-existent heat, the Magical Sugar Rabbits get the win. Uh, they defeat Emi Sakura and Suzume when Mizuki gets the win over Emi Sakura with her cutie special. Uh, looking at the numbers here, yeah, Mizuki and Yuka are putting on really good numbers here. Yuka with a 70, Mizuki with a 65. Emi and uh, Suzume aren't going to be getting much at all with their 40s, but hey-ho, it's all right. Uh, we just want momentum to be built between these two, especially Mizuki. She needs to get those numbers up. But that is the end of our pre-show. Let's jump straight into AEW Collision where Keith Lee seems to have found a new home over here. Now that he's international champion, he can float between the two and he's come over here issuing an open challenge during the week in which it was accepted by Pentagon Jr.'s teammate, Ray Fenix. And in a bout that had superb wrestling, apparently, even though it was an 81, and a decent reaction from the crowd, Keith Lee wins in 80 minutes with his spirit bomb, uh, meaning this is his first defense of the AEW International title. And he is celebrating in the ring when, as he turns around, Pentagon is stood in front of him. He then looks to his left and sees that Pac is stood facing him. And then he turns around to see that Phoenix is now on his feet, staring at him. All three members of Death Triangle have surrounded Keith Lee and suddenly the lights go to black and when they come back up Keith Lee is on his own in the ring so it seems like um, Death Triangle have got all three pairs of their eyes focused on Keith Lee Pentagon wanting revenge Ray Fenix you know backing up his boy and Pac is just always angry so that just makes sense uh, 77 rated segment mm, not the best um, but it's fine, we carry on. Uh, we do head backstage now, where we see Claudio confronting uh, Wheelie Yuta and Zack Sabre Jr. Basically just saying to him, guys, um, what the hell has been happening? How can you just let this happen? You know, as we know, Claudio is no longer part of the combat club. 
and Wheeler and Zach are just saying, look, Claudia, we don't want to hear it. You know, what Mock says goes, uh, we're just falling in line. You know, you better, you know, piss off. Otherwise, Mox is going to get angry with us too. Um, and Claudio, you know, kind of grabs Zack Sabre Jr.'s arm and she says, Zack, like, I'm the one that convinced you to join the combat club. What the hell? And Zack's like, you better let go of me, Claudio. Otherwise, you're going to regret it. And Wheeler steps in and says, yeah, Claudio, back off. Uh, to which, out of camera, walks in Jeff Cobb, the man that was targeted by the combat club all those weeks and kind of saved by Claudio. And Jeff says, Claudio, we got an issue here or do you need a an extra pair of hands and zach says pipe down jeff you're not involved in this and jeff says well i think i am because you guys have been targeting me every single week so you know if you've got a problem with claudio then you've got a problem with me and claudio just says thanks jeff you know Mwah. love you <laughs> um and uh, yeah, it kind of just ends with a very intimidating stare down between these four men. And when we cut to Chris Jericho saying he's just been told by Tony Khan that our main event tonight has been scheduled after that altercation. We're going to get Claudio and Cobb teaming up, taking on Wheeler Yuta and Zack Sabre Jr. of the Combat Club. Uh, so that is our main event tonight. Hopefully it will be a fun one. Um... But we do head back to the ring now where La Faxion have come out to the ring and issued a challenge. They have challenged House of Black and said, you say that you should be the number one contenders for the trios titles, but we believe that La Faxion are the most dominant team in AEW. So if you think that you have earned a shot at Bullet Club Gold, come out right now and prove it against us. So up next, we have La Faxion taking on House of Black. And yeah, the winner of this match will go on to face Bullet Club Gold at the future Battle of the Belts show. I haven't picked a winner for this, so let's see what happens. And about that good wrestling decent reaction from the crowd, La Faxion get the win. Uh, they defeat House of Black when Roosh pins Brody King with the Roosh driver wow so all this talk from house of black has just crumbled the house has crumbled because la faction are our new number one contenders and will go on to battle of the belts whenever it may be it'll probably be within this month probably the next couple of weeks uh, but we will get confirmation of that soon uh, they will be taking on bullet club gold for the world trios championships an 80 rated uh, match here with an 83 from roosh an 81 from andrade 73 from Sammy and all of the House of Black members with a 60-ish rating. Ilya really off his game, which sucks because normally Ilya is right up there. Um, but yeah, La Faxion came out, they called them out and they conquered. Nice one. Moving on from this, we've got some women's action and Jamie Hayter is back. Oh, and in a 73 rated, 83 rated performance from Jamie Hayter. Uh, Jamie Hayter defeats Daria Beranato. Ber Beranato in 14 minutes with a curb stomp. Jamie Hayter is back and she is looking good. A 77 rated match, love to see that. Uh, yeah, an awesome performance. I think 83 is one of the highest performances we've got from a woman ever. So high five Jamie Hayter. Uh, not much between this, it's just a return match with Jamie, haven't seen her on TV in a while. So it's great to see her back. Uh, we do head backstage briefly where Renee has caught up with Claudio and Jeff Cobb. And it's just talking to the guys, just being like, guys, um, crazy things have happened. You know, Claudio, you performed amazingly at Revolution, but unfortunately, um, it resulted in you being kicked out of the combat club. First of all, how are you feeling? Um, second of all, you know, what are your thoughts on tonight's match? And Claudio just says, you know, these things just happen. You have to move on and look forward instead of looking back. Um, Moxley is not the man that we all uh, know. I'm sure you can agree with that, Renee. He's been acting different lately, and I was. It was a place of concern at first, but now, you know, it's a little bit more personal. And Wheeler and Zach, I thought they were also my friends, but it turns out it's just all about, you know, the business um, and friendships. You know, just aren't a thing that exist anymore. But I've got this man, Jeff Cobb, by my side, who's not only defeated me, but also defeated Zack Sabre Jr. in the last month. So 
I'm feeling good about tonight. I think that the two of us uh, can form a strong partnership to take on uh, the combat club. And Jeff just chimes in and says, yep, uh, Claudio is an amazing talent and the combat club are stupid for letting this man go. And he they're going to regret it tonight when the Claudio and Cobb connection uh, destroy the combat club. Uh, so yeah, looks like Jeff and Claudio are already on the same page. Jeff especially, you know, good guy Jeff, uh, inform Jeff, should be a good, good match tonight. But first, we do have more tag team action and it's a debut for the young 18 year old Nick Wayne. He teams up with Darby Allen to take on the kingdom. And in about the had decent wrestling, but little heat, Darby Allen and Nick Wayne get the win. They defeat the kingdom in 15 minutes when Darby Allen pins Mike Bennett with the coffin drop. Darby Allen was head and shoulders above everyone else. That's fair enough. Nick Wayne is still young, still growing, still getting better. But yeah, great debut, great win for Nick Wayne. The kingdom, they're a great team to job against. They put up decent numbers. Don't know why my voice went like that. But yeah, look, they got all this green that comes with them. Um, and yeah, awesome debut from Nick Wayne. Him and Darby are probably going to be a team that we stick with for a while just to give Nick that extra boost and that extra rub. Um, and yeah, and it gets Darby on TV, which is something we've been wanting to do for a while. So yeah, awesome win. Congrats on your debut, Nick. Love to see it. Um, although it's not showing as a debut, which is strange. Um, I mean, I think it's because he was already a part of the company went down to Ring of Honor. I've brought him back up. I think that's mostly what it is. Uh, but yeah, awesome. Uh, we head backstage for the final time tonight before our main event, where RJ City is talking to Demi Bennett. And Demi says that she wants her match against Rebecca Knox to come sooner rather than later, which is why she has specifically requested that at the upcoming Battle of the Belts, her match against Rebecca Knox will be happening. So, so far, we've got a few confirmations for this already. We will have a Trios titles match. We will have um, Demi Bennett and Rebecca Knox. And we've also got the confirmation of Brian Danielson taking on Daniel Garcia. So that's three matches confirmed. I'm not looking to confirm any more than five. Uh, might even leave it at the three or four. Uh, so yeah, that should be huge. And that may main event. Who knows? Um, got some good contenders for main event matches. So Demi Bennett has said, I put in the request and I can't see them refusing. So Rebecca, congratulations on your Owen Hart Cup win, but it's going to mean nothing when I crush you. So yeah, good little segment here. RJ City playing the character well, probably, you know, a little bit intimidated by Demi, probably asking her to step on him or something. Um, but yeah, this takes us to our main event, uh, the Cobb and Claudio connection, as they're calling themselves, against Wheeler Utah and Zack Sabre Jr. of the combat club let's see how it goes down 77 oh honestly thought it'd be a bit better than this oh well uh in about the had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd wheeler utah and zach saber jr get the win when wheeler pins jeff cobb during the match we also had shane haste running in to attack jeff cobb shane haste of tmdk uh, makes his return slash debut for Collision because he is originally a dynamite boy uh, attacking Jeff Cobb for some strange reason. Claudio was, you know, tied up by Zack Sabre Jr. when Utah took advantage of the attack. During the match, though, Utah sustained a back injury, which I'm assuming impacted this score, which sucks because I was hoping this would be a really, really good match. We can't seem to progress, which is very strange. Um, let me take a look. What does that say? Unavailable. Why is it unavailable? Very strange. Hmm. Return to booking screen. Okay. Some of the show needs to be rebooked. Oh. So I've never seen this before. Wow. Wheeler Utah sustained a back injury in this match. Some of the show will need to be rebooked as a result. Okay. So this just needs to be rebooked. Oh, because it's got Wheeler Utah in it. So we just take him out. I mean, you can see what it says here. So spoilers, guys. Uh, none. Book segment. Cool. Thankfully, that was at the end. That's so weird. I've never seen that before. There we go. So the final segment, you know, nothing special. Uh, 
Moxley, Haste, Uta apparently, and Zack Sabre Jr. stand tall after a post-match attack um, on Claudio Castagnoli and Jeff Cobb. Uh, so it seems like Shane Haste is the newest member of the combat club. A very interesting pick, a very random pick, but a pick nonetheless. So we're going to have to see how he does in this new look combat club. And that is how we end the show. As you saw, we had one post-show segment, which is Chris Jericho confirming that we will see Jeff Cobb facing off against Shane Haste next week. And that is how we finish the show. And honestly, I think this was a pretty weak show. Um, let's see what it says. A 78. Oh, we've lost pop. That's not good. Um, I mean, we're consistently, you know, high-ish. Like, you know, the high 70s, early 80s. But it's not good enough. We need 85 plus segments in order to carry us through. So this is the worst show we've had in a very long time. Um... I guess that's what happens when uh, you don't have Kenny, Hangman, etc. on the show. I mean, Moxley's segment wasn't that great, although he was only in the one. But yeah, either way, I mean, I'm assuming that Wheeler Yuta's injury is actually quite serious, which is why we had to rebook it, so that sucks. But yeah, what a, what a flip-reverse episode. Normally, it's Dynamite that just scratches 80 rating, and Collision normally kills it, so yeah, very weird. Uh, but that is how we end this episode. Uh, Shane Haste, the latest member, or the newest member, I should say, of the Combat Club. Uh, looks like Claudio and Cobb's feud with them is not over yet. we got a great debut from Nick Wayne. La Faction are our new number one contenders. And Keith Lee has got a triangle-sized target on his back. Uh, yeah, that is it for this one, guys. Um may not have been the greatest ending to the show but trust me i'm cooking up some crazy things in the next couple of weeks uh so yeah you got that to look forward to thank you very much everyone please like comment subscribe share and i'll see you all in the next one bye yeah